What's happening, everybody? I want to tell you about one of the coolest moments I've ever been involved in. In fact, this probably is the most awesome activist moment I have ever witnessed. It was my 2013 trip to Israel. I had around 20 lectures set up at colleges, uh, small theaters, and a couple of high schools. As most of you know, the Ministry of Education banned me from speaking in high schools. By the way, same thing happens in America. I rarely get into high schools or middle schools anymore. Way too much red tape. Well, the first lecture on this tour was supposed to happen at a high school. After the ban came down, believe it or not, the parents were furious that the school would not let me in to speak to the students about animal liberation and veganism. So one couple that lived around two blocks from the high school decided to invite me to speak in their backyard. They rented a projector, they had around 200 chairs that they rented as well, and they invited all the students at the school to come to their backyard on Friday after school. Well, I heard about this and I thought the sentiment was obviously sweet, but there was no way kids were going to come to hear a lecture after school on Friday about animal liberation. I showed up about a half an hour before the lecture was supposed to begin, introduced myself to the parents, I thanked them for their concern, and around five minutes before the schedule start, there was still nobody there. I wasn't angry. Again, I didn't expect students to come to this. But all of a sudden, ten walked in. So I turned to my wife, Eric. I said, well, I've spoken to ten students before, so I guess I'll just talk to these ten. But then a couple minutes later, ten more showed up. And those ten said, don't start. There's a bunch of people coming. I was like, get out of here. There's no way there's a bunch of people coming. And all of a sudden, they started pouring in, in droves. It ended up being around 250 students. I was near tears before the lecture started. In fact, during the lecture, I broke down and cried because I saw some young people around six or seven years old who came on their own to listen to this, and they were in tears listening to my words, watching the slaughterhouse footage. It was quite an emotional experience. In fact, I'm almost positive 99% of the students that day uh, embraced veganism and were going to change for the better. They kept me after this lecture for about two hours, each and every one of them telling me that they would never eat animal products again. So I want to share this clip during the Q&A portion of the speech in the backyard. It was about eggs, so everybody needs to hear this. In fact, this is where the egg toilet challenge was born. you got to check it out. Much love to everybody, and I'll be back soon. Peace. Uh, if I eat you have a hen in your own backyard, you mean? Yeah, but like, but like if it's, there's no cold Let me explain this in a couple ways. First of all, do you ever eat eggs from turtles? <laughs> How come? Well, you didn't try it, okay. But you didn't try it because the egg industry picked on the hen a couple thousand years ago and made the hen the victim and not the turtle. Many other creatures lay eggs, but we don't go out and have turtle egg omelets, <coughs> even though you could. So the hen is being commodified. Now that might be a new word to some people. Commodification means you're turning an animal into an object and that animal wasn't meant to be that object. Or you just want something from that animal and that's all you want. Now, I understand that a hen living in your backyard has a better life than a hen that lives in the egg industry. I understand that. But you only want the hen for the egg. I volunteered in an animal sanctuary back in Michigan for 17 years. We have hundreds of hens there. Every week, a couple dozen people stop by and say, hey, we'd like to have a hen in our backyard because uh, we really want to have a hen as a pet. Now they're lying about this, they just want the eggs. So we know they're lying, so what we say is, okay, actually we have some old hens, and we'd like to make some more space for the young hens that are coming in that we rescue. So yeah, we have some old hens, they're not laying eggs anymore, but yeah, we'd love to give them a nice home. And guess what they do every time? They go, um, she doesn't lay eggs? No, she, she, she's old, she's like seven years old. 
And then we always go, oh, you don't want her, do you? So you don't really want a hen as a pet, like you said you did. You just want the eggs. So you see the problem? You still only want, want the hen for that one thing. And it's not okay. And let me throw this out there, too. And I know we have young kids here, but you guys need to learn the truth. I mentioned this during the speech. I'm going to mention it again. Why do you want to eat something that came out of somebody else's asshole? <laughs> it is not food. It is not food. Listen, if you want something out of somebody else's ass, when one of these dogs takes a shit, I'll save it for you. I'll put it in a nice pretty bottle in a package. You can take it home today and grab a bagel and smear it on a bagel have a little bit of sandwich. Okay? Things that come out of somebody else's ass is not food. It is not good for you. It's disgusting. Let me explain it this way. I'm going to get you off eggs right now. Right now, if you're still on eggs, I'm going to get you off eggs. <laughs> when you go home today, I want you to go to the bathroom whenever you go into the bathroom. Do both things in the bathroom, okay? Pee and poop. Don't flush the toilet. Walk to the kitchen, grab an egg from your refrigerator. Walk back to the toilet. Put it inside the toilet. If you even have the courage to stick your hand in there and pull the egg back out, and you can wash it when you're done, you can bleach it, do whatever you want. Would you still want to eat it? <laughs> okay, this is your own shit. This is yours, and you still would eat it. This is no hen shit. You don't even know the hen. <laughs> it lives inside in shit and piss. <laughs> Can we move on and get to real food? I got a better idea. Instead of eating eggs for breakfast, try eating some blueberries and some strawberries and some raspberries and some peaches or nectarines and grapes and bananas. Eat some real food. What's wrong with teaching the truth? The school is supposed to be a place of learning, of education, not deceit and propaganda, which is what they do. They teach kids that it's okay to rape animals and steal their babies and kill them and sell their flesh and skin. They tell kids that it's okay to eat things that come out of a hen's ass. They ha tell kids it's okay to eat things that drip from animal udders. They tell kids it's okay to eat flesh and blood, and people are upset with me? We'll try to translate. <laughs>